Welcome to Baptist Assembly. Thank you so much for joining us this evening for this special time when we're coming, gathering together to honour and give thanks for the lives and witness of ministers and mission personnel who have died since our last Baptist Assembly gathering in May 2019. I'm Lynn Green, General Secretary of Baptist Together, and uh, it's great that I'm joined here leading tonight with Arthur Brown, Director of Mission with BMS. Arthur. Thank you, Lynn. It's really good to be with you this evening and a privilege to take part in this event. Let me explain how we are going to remember this evening. We're going to be using a prayer framework to help us um, remember and give thanks um, for those that we've lost. We'll begin with prayer, and then the names of those that we're honouring will be read out in groups. We will continue this pattern until all the names have been read out of those who have died. Reading and praying tonight will be Charmaine Malanga from Spurgeon's College, Naomi Brown representing BMS World Mission, Brian Scott from the Heart of England Baptist Association, Amy Morris, representing children, youth and families, and Amanda Pink, who is a hospital chaplain. Let us remember together. Good evening. We give you thanks for life. Yes, we give you thanks for this unlikely, miraculous, fragile, persistent, regenerating, finite, wondrous, holy mix of cells and breath and soul. Yes, for life we give you thanks and we remember. Joan Anderson, Mary Anslow, Michael Banfield, Patricia Batterby, Alan Best, David Betts, Peter Briggs, Gary Bigham, Catherine Bowen, Michael Braun, John Bristow, Charles Brobbery, James Buckley, Stephen Buckley, Danny Calder, James Cargill, Peter Chevel, Dick Coleman, Derek Conabeer, Hazel Caldridge, George Cryshank. We give you thanks for these lives. Yes, for these lives, unique and common and individual and connected and ordinary and rich and beautiful and flawed and graced and hard and blessed and holy and lived. Yes, for these lives we give you thanks and we remember. Anne Davis. John Doble. James Donaldson. Elsie Drewitt. Mike Ewings, Simon Farrar, 
Roy Fellows, John Freshwater, John Garland, Philip Gathercole, Donald Gibbs, um, Andy Gilbert. Ralph Goer, Robbie Hall, Dennis Hallas, David Harper, Stephen Harvey, G. Hemp, Richard. Hetherington, Derek Hills, John Hopper, Annie Horsfall, we give you thanks for these live legacies. Yes, for these lives' legacies, for tender moments shared and lifelong habits modeled, for memories that raise a smile and conflicts that helped us grow, for kindness that were offered and those that were received, for the service that stands recognized and that which went unseen, for kingdom values lived, and for all the sins forgiven, for scattered holy seeds of faith and hope and love. Yes, for the legacy of these lives, we give you thanks. Margaret Hughes. Gwendolyn Hunter, David Herford, Pat Ingle, Kenneth Jarvis, Audrey Kimber, Hilda Kingston, Clive Knight, Betsy Lee, Raymond Lewis, George Lindo, Joy Males, Monica Mallard. Peter Manson, Maurice Markham, Tony Moran, Hugh Matthews, Alan May, Hercelia McCall. Crawford McIntyre, Clifford Meads Day, we give you thanks for love. Yes, we give you thanks for the love that now seems ended and for the love that carries on, for the love that faltered and falters, that tries and fails and fails and tries, and for the love which is patient and kind, and self-effacing and generous, and truthful and ever hopeful, and holy and eternal. Yes, for their love, for our love, for your love, we give you thanks, and we remember. We 
Ronald Messenger. Jeff Monnery. Paul Montague. Bob Morris. Derek Nern. David Norgate. Anne North. Jeff Ottaway. David Parsons. Bob Paul. David Pawson. Francis Phillips. Glyn Phillips. Maureen Porter. Douglas Ralph. Benjamin Richards. Ron Rivers. Olive Rowett. Jeffrey Rudge. Sheila Samuels. And Brian Scott. And we give you thanks that all these are held in your hands. Life and these lives and their legacies. Held in love, held by you. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Our source and our completion. The author and perfecter of our faith. God who lived and died and rose again, the Holy One. Yes, we give you thanks that we are all, all we are, held in your hands, held in love. And we remember. Jen Sewell. Douglas Sparks. Richard Steele. Alex Dean. Frank Stevenson. Charlie Sutherland. Eileen Talbot. William Thomas. Clifford Thomas. Eileen Thompson. Marjorie Tissington. John Tuffer. Gordon Tuck. Arthur Tuffy. Tony Turner. Dick Basie. Reginald Webb. Susan Whitfield. Elizabeth Whitty. Jeffrey Wilson, Peter Wilson, John Young, Thank you to all those who've helped us to remember tonight. And a special uh, thank you to Amanda Pink, who wrote that framework prayer for us. So thank you, Amanda. I'm aware that uh, for many of us across Baptist Together that we 
have experienced grief and loss in all sorts of different ways, particularly in this last year. And so I'd really like us to pray now um, for our churches, for our communities, for ourselves, as we continue to grieve. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for your promise that you are always with us, even when we are numb with grief and overwhelmed by sorrow. We rest in your presence now, trusting that you hold us in and through all things. And as we sit with you, we remember again in the quietness those who we have loved and lost. Our hearts well up with love and gratitude and loss for loved ones full in years who were looking forward to seeing you face to face. Lord, we miss them so much and all that they meant to us. Thank you for all the precious memories that we can cherish. Help us to encounter you in our grief as well as our joy and give us the grace to entrust them to you, assured by your promise of eternal life. Compassionate Lord, our hearts also cry out to you with our pain and anguish for the loss of loved ones who have died too soon. Lord, there was so much life yet to live and the shock of unexpected loss still feels so raw. Surround us with your presence and peace as we grieve, heartbroken for loved ones lost too soon and for shared plans and dreams that are now shattered. Thank you that you walk this journey with us, sharing our sorrow, tenderly caring for us and giving us grace and strength for each day. At the right time, we pray, Lord, deepen our thankfulness, stir up hope again and gently lead us into a new future. We pray for the families and friends of those in our communities who face the reality of death without hope. In their grief and loss, may they encounter your love, light and presence in their darkness. May we who share Christ's suffering also journey with fellow sufferers, so that out of our shared brokenness, love will prevail and kingdom wholeness and blessing will flow. As we remember and give thanks, Lord, may we be aware of your presence in our grief and encouraged in our faith that nothing can separate us from your love. Renew us in our worship and serving that we may be faithful disciples who glorify you in the whole of life, beginnings and endings and all that lies in between. Hear our prayer, Lord. Amen. Thank you, then. I've been asked to lead a short reflection and lament given the wider loss that many of us have experienced recently. Throughout scripture, we encounter people pouring out their pain and their sorrow with levels of honesty and raw emotion that many of us may find difficult to express ourselves. Lament is clearly seen as an important element of our relationship with God. Lament is an honest expression of how we're feeling to a God who cares deeply for us and our situations. It's a powerful expression of faith in a faithful God who's close and intimate. And it's an opportunity to join with others, both as an expression of shared pain and also of solidarity in a hurting world. And that is what we do this evening. Lament isn't um, a, an expression of doubt or a loss of faith or something to be ashamed of. And it's not a sign of weakness. It's also not simply complaining about our current situation, but acknowledging God is with us within those situations. And lament isn't the opposite of thanksgiving. 
Throughout the Psalms, we see lament mixed with thanksgiving. In the midst of pain, faithful people seeking to hold on to the things that they are still thankful for. Many of us will be familiar with the story that Tony Campolo often shares about a preacher he once heard contrasting um, the, the sorrows and the feelings of Good Friday with the, those of Easter Sunday, with the now famous refrain, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. The pain and the loss of that Friday, with Jesus apparently defeated, contrasted with the incomparable joy of that first Easter Sunday, the hopelessness of the Friday, contrasted with the new hope of the Sunday. I don't know where you are now, but it's easy to lose the significance of the Saturday, that in-between Friday and Sunday, that time of uncertainty and anxiety, of waiting to see what would happen next, to discover what tomorrow had in store. Perhaps many of us in the UK are seeing signs of hope, the vaccine, the lifting of lockdown restrictions, aware of what we have lost, but close to emerging into something new. And yet around the world, there are countless people still to see the worst of the pandemic, very much in the midst of that Friday. And so while we lament the loss that we've experienced close to home, we join in lamenting with many others around the world who will continue to suffer for years to come. And so we come to God with a prayer of lament, naming some of the things that we've lost. Father God, together we approach you, thankful that you care about the loss that we continue to experience. We lament the loss of life, of loved ones, of those near and those that we never knew. We lament the loss of time with family, friends and loved ones. We lament the loss of confidence many of us have experienced as a result of this pandemic. We lament the loss of mental health and well-being many of us are now experiencing. We lament the loss of employment for so many people in the UK and around the world. We lament the loss of financial security, particularly for those without a safety net. We lament the loss of opportunity that this pandemic has caused in so many different ways for so many different people. We lament the loss of schooling and education for children and young people around the world. We lament the loss of opportunities for socialisation and play for younger children. We lament the loss of life balance for those who have had to work too hard, often at great cost. And we lament the loss of peace many of us have experienced in one way or another. We come before you, a God who understands pain, a God who comforts and restores, a God who is faithful, close, and who gives us hope. And we acknowledge that it's been hard and that we have lost a lot. We offer you our worship in honesty and in vulnerability. And in the midst of this, we choose to say, blessed be your name 
because you are faithful. Amen. I will now hand over to Yinka, who will lead us in a time of prayer for the assembly. Thank you, uh, Arthur. You know, some of those names that we've just heard read, some of them we might recognize, some we might not be familiar with, but they're part of our wonderful Baptist family and continue to be. They've run their race, they're now in glory. And we embrace the pain of loss, but also look forward to the joy of seeing them once more. The scripture says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And of course, we have the legacy, the memories of these amazing people and what they've done, and we will remember them, and we hope that our lives will also speak of something wonderful about Christ. And so as we turn to pray for assembly, which starts uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we want to pray, uh, first of all, for the, uh, uh, the AGM. Um, the AGM is going to be a very amazing time of reading of reports. And Father, we, pr we thank you for those who have produced the reports, for all the hard work that's gone into preparing. And, and we pray for a smooth uh, AGM uh, 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 on Saturday morning. We also pray, Lord, for BMS. We thank you, Lord, for the work of BMS. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that together with BMS over the last five years, we've been able to impact the lives of over a million people. What vision, what courage, what servanthood. And Father, we pray that the next five years would see even greater a greater impact, and as we've been invited by them to join with the premier of the new strategy, Lord, we pray that we would be inspired, uh, uh, not just about what happens overseas, but Lord, about how we can implement some of the lessons back here at home. Father, we want to pray for all those who've got themselves ready for the seminars, um, the justice group, uh, the round table, uh, the Baptist environmental network, and the mission forum. And Father, we, we pray for those seminars, including the seminar of our keynote speaker, uh, Sean Caliborn. Father, we ask that, Lord, these would be times uh, that would be informative, that would stretch, expand our understanding uh, of one another, of the world in which we live, and how we can make a difference. Father, we pray, Lord, that there'd be something practical that each delegate could take from these sessions. And Father, we want to also pray uh, for the, uh, uh, our new president, Jeff Comer, as he uh, comes into office. Lord, bless him. We look forward to what we're going to learn from him and for the new ministers that will be welcomed uh, into fellowship. And so, Father, we know and we understand that if we will make these temples available, uh, Lord, you will fill it. You love filling temples. You, you love filling temples that are dedicated to you. And Father, we once more as a Baptist movement, as we come to assembly, come to listen to one another, come to learn from each other, we ask, Lord, that you would fill this temple offered to you, and that, Father, Lord, uh, uh, we would see incredible fruit that comes from it. And so we commit all these into your hands. Uh, bless uh, Lynn as she leads us uh, over these next few days, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now hand back to our General Secretary, Lynn. Thank you so much for leading us, Yinka, uh, in prayer for our assembly. And thank you too for joining us for this very special evening. Um, it's good that we can gather together to honour these brothers and sisters in Christ who have died. Um, as Yinka said, please join us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking back at the past year and celebrating some of the great achievements there. And we're going to be inspired, I am sure, by our first talk from our keynote speaker, Shane Claiborne. So I hope to see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Thank you again for joining us tonight. Good night. <laughs>